We all saw this happen, right? It was wrong for many reasons. And I'm sure you've seen people commenting on both sides. And I'm sure you've seen all the memes about it as well. But I want to unpack what we can do to manage our anger in the moment. Because as much as this is something that happened, who's there to say that we're not going to have moments in our life where someone or something is going to happen to us and we're going to feel incredibly angry in the moment and we could potentially lash out and say or do something that can hurt someone. So I think it's worthwhile that we use this as a lesson because emotions are something that we all feel. It's a core ingredient in our humanity. But we've got to learn how to best manage our emotions. In this video, I'm going to go into why it's important that we do this, how we can manage it in the moment, and how we can get better at managing it in the moment. Why should we learn how to manage our anger? Well, the first thing is that we can potentially hurt someone. And we can do that either physically or verbally. And as much as sticks and stones can break your bones and words can never hurt you, sometimes words can actually hurt us the most. I'm sure you've experienced a time where someone has said something to you that cut real deep. And like, ever since then, you, your friendship or your relationship has never been the same. Um, or it's just something that just keeps you playing in your mind. And all of a sudden, it's like something that agitates you. So words and like physical violence can actually hurt someone else. And I'm sure you've had this experience before, like if you've got like a sibling. I know when I was younger, I have like a, I have like a little brother and when we were younger, we used to like play fight. And there'd be times when, you know, we'd get a little bit too into it to a point where we'd like pretend, pretend to wrestle. But then we like, you know how they say like, do, do, do not practice this at home. We basically did the opposite of that. We practiced at home. Um, and I remember a time when like I tried to do John Cena's, like, you know, the FU to him. Um, and I heard him a bit too much. And like, obviously he wasn't injured or anything, but he started crying. I was freaking out. I was like, oh crap, he's going to tell mom. And so I noticed how like, sometimes when I get too caught up in the moment or when our emotions are like too on edge, I kind of get like, I kind of forget everything else and just, just go with it. And like, um, I don't, I don't, my intention is not to hurt, but unfortunately that's sometimes just how it is. And like, I'm sure you've had an experience where you said or did something to someone, but you may not have intended to hurt them, but because you were so caught up in the moment, like that's just what ended up happening in the third, like anyway. And like when we learn how to manage our anger, we can stop ourselves from going too far. Like even if, we, even if we're play fighting with a sibling, right? We can, we can get to a point where it's just playful and not to a point where it's a little bit too much. Another reason why it's really important is that we could potentially hurt ourselves as well. Maybe you said something or you did something to someone that you know really hurt them. And like you were thinking afterwards, like, oh crap, I actually really love this person. I actually really care about this person. But the thing that I said or the thing that I did, like it hurt them and that actually makes you feel like extremely bad. Like, I'm, like maybe you felt an experience like that before. And like, not only that, like the actions that, you know, the actions that we take, the words that we say, the, re the repercussions end up falling back on us. So you end up feeling regretful, you end up feeling really guilty, and also our reputation can be affected as well. And on that note, like just kind of like a, add a layer of self-awareness to everything over here, is that the type of person you want to be like? Like, is this your best? Is this you, right? Like, do you want to be better or do you want to be bitter? I know for me, when I become angry in the moment and I rush out at someone, I've always regretted it afterwards because I know it's not my best. So how do we manage this thing in the moment? Like at the peak, the height of that emotional intensity, how do we manage it? One of the best ways and most underrated ways is that we pause. Now this is like all these methods have been explored in like psych journals and like a whole bunch of articles. So feel free to check out all these different things. But I'm just sharing with you a few ways that it works really well for me. And one of the best ways is pausing, like literally stopping yourself in that height of intensity of that emotion and just like pausing just for a couple of seconds, even if it's a minute. And one other thing, like if you want to add another layer to this, is like usually the second thing, which is like you step away from the situation. I mean, you step away from it, it just gives you room to breathe. Like if you change your environment, you can change how you feel. Another way that's really helpful to manage your emotions is to breathe. And I'm sure you've heard this before, but like you'll notice that when you're angry, when you're frustrated, when you're anxious, that your breath is extremely fast paced. When you're breathing really fast, you're, you're thinking, your thought patterns are like extremely fast as well. And so you're not giving yourself enough time to choose to respond rather than just react to the situation or whatever it is that's happening. One method that I've been using recently is this double breath. And like predominantly it's for from what I from what I've read in like research journals is that it's used for um, used for anxiety because what happens is that when we're normally breathing, 
I'm um, or, or when we're anxious, like our breathing's quite shallow. And so there's like a whole bunch of like areas of our lungs that just isn't getting any oxygen. And oxygen plays a really important part in lowering our stress levels. And like when you take a double breath, where in, in other words, like you literally breathe in and you breathe in deeper, it's like filling your lungs with a lot more oxygen, giving yourself a lot more space and giving your mind and your breath like a little bit of kind of effectively breathing space, just chill out. I've used it for anxiety, but I've also started using it for anger. It's just been something that's just been like, it's just, it's just worked. Like I don't get angry that often, I don't consider myself an angry person. But in the times that I have gotten like a little bit angry or frustrated at something, this double breath has just been something that's been extremely helpful and just allowing me to just relax and calm down and learn. One thing that kind of all these different things, like you know, pausing, stepping away from the situation, breathing, kind of like allows us to do, so ask ourselves questions. What's the best way that I can deal with this situation without causing harm? If I reply like this or I act like this, this is going to help the situation in any way. How can I respond in this situation rather than just react? When we ask ourselves questions, it allows our mind to focus on that question. When we focus on that question, we're busy trying to find the solution to it and what's the most helpful for the situation, depending on what the question is, right? Rather than just acting on a whim, and like rather than just reacting to a stimulus that we've experienced. Now it's all well and good that we talk about these things because it sounds like a lot and like it is a lot. Like how do we do all these different things in the moment? Because sometimes in that high intensity emotion, when we're in all of that, it's hard to even think about taking a break. It's hard to even think about stepping away from the situation and taking a breath. Like or taking a few deep breaths, like whatever it is, right? Like however you want to breathe or whatever. Like it's hard to even think about doing that when you're caught up in that moment. So how do we get better at catching ourselves? Well, in essence, you want to be focusing on practices, on things that help you get better at responding and not reacting. I'm just going to review on both of them. Reacting is like basically something happens and then before thinking about it, you just say or do something. Responding is something happens and then you think about it and you reflect and then you, and then you, and then you act or then you say something. Like there's like in reacting, the missing piece there is thought and reflection. One of the best ways to get better at responding is meditation. And I'm sure you've heard this before, you might be thinking, oh crap, you know what, like I hate meditating, or like I can't meditate, I'm not a person that meditates. I'm like, look, fair enough, I actually, I actually thought the same as well. Um, but like, you know, as much as they say, you know, one, two minutes a day is gonna make a difference. In my opinion and in my experience, it hasn't made too much of a difference. It might start off the practice of meditation, but in terms of getting benefit of it, like I personally haven't experienced much of that doing it just that way. But like, if we can build ourselves up to, you know, 20, 30 minutes, it means like we can actually start experiencing the benefits of it. One app that I use is the Tempest app. And I re the reason why I like this app is because like it gives me, you know, it gives me like levels that I, I, I can meditate with. So I can start with the very basic so I can get a little more extreme if I wanted to. I can like choose one specific for like anxiety or like anger or like sadness. Like I can choose kind of the topic that I want to meditate on so I can experience something different, whatever it is. And it also means that I can also like, they also have like really good um, durations, like very lengths, which means that if I have an extremely busy day, then I can choose a meditation that's a little shorter. Or if I feel like I have ample time, or I feel like I want to meditate for longer, then I can choose a long one. Or I can even just meditate on my own to one thing and I can track it on my watch. Like it's it's really, really cool. I really like this app. Like there's a whole bunch of apps that you can use. Like you can use Headspace, you can use Balance, it's like Calm, you can use Calm. Like there's so many different types of apps out there. Like a lot of those services are like free. So like go ahead and find out, use, what you can. And just kind of like on that point of like, you know, one or two minutes not being enough. The reason why I feel like, like this is just my thoughts on it. This is not kind of anything to do with like research at all. But the this kind of brings me back to a point in a video that I made ages ago where like you cannot, like if you want to focus for about a minute to two minutes, five minutes when you want to meditate, five, 10 minutes, right? Like you get yourself to sit down and you focus on your breathing, for example, as a meditation. If you spend the rest of that day like the rest of the 23 hours and 50 minutes, 23 hours and 45 minutes being distracted, how on earth are you gonna focus for that 10, 15 minutes? Like, whatever, whatever you practice, you get better at. If you've practiced being distracted, how can you expect yourself to focus? If you've practiced, you know, letting your emotions run wild, if you've practiced being agitated, if you've practiced like not reflecting, and re like if you've practiced reacting, how on earth are you going to expect yourself to respond in situations that you want to respond? Like, it's, that, that's all it is. And so, that's obviously like another reason why it's important that we don't have to manage our emotions. 
like we learn how to get better at like responding during the day, like as the day goes on. And so that when it comes to like important moments in our life where, you know, we're somewhere we could say something that could either like make or break the situation, we say the right thing in that moment or we don't say anything at all. That gap between stimulus and response, as mentioned in The Mindful Athlete by George Mumford, right? Being aware of that gap and being as aware of that gap as possible is you know, incredibly important when it comes to learning how to manage our anger in the moment. Another kind of way to like manage all of this, like and like that's maybe not even get angry or get don't even get that angry. Just have like healthy outlets. For example, for me, like hitting the gym has just been a really good way for me to manage my emotions. Cause I just feel like, you know, if I had a tough day and at the end of the day, if I get to the gym and I lift a couple of heavy things, then I just feel a lot better about myself. Right? And like, I think the way that I think about this is that whether I had a good or bad day, the weights are gonna treat me the same. And like, I really appreciate that. And for me, it's kind of like, it's therapeutic in a way. I also see a psych or a counselor, like, if I, I know that in difficult times in my life, if I manage to speak to someone like a professional, they've actually managed to give me this headspace, the space of kind of for me to figure out my own kind of ways of dealing with things, or they've suggested a few ways that have really helped me. And like, if that means that you need to seek some help, go seek some help. Like that's one of the, like a few therapy sessions might be one of the best ways to kind of work through that anger, work through those intense emotions. May not even be anger, maybe a few other things that are there for you. But like, that'd be one of the best ways to kind of work through that. You could also alternatively like scream into a pillow. And if you're at work, you go to your car and scream in your car. Like I think any way that you find that helps you get out of that anger, like get a bit off your chest and like let the emotions loose a little bit. Take a few rocks out of your jar, right? If like whatever helps you do that without, and if like whatever it is that helps you do that without like hurting someone else or returning yourself, it's not doing any of these things, then I'd say it's not a bad thing. Another way that I love to do this, and like I really, to be honest, upon reflection, I should be doing this way more, but I don't do enough of this, um, is like writing in a journal, I'm, like doing a bit of introspecting. And the reason why I feel like this is so important and has been so useful in the past for me and why I want to do more of it is because when I write down my emotions and I write down how I'm feeling on a piece of paper, it allows me to stand apart from it. It means that I can have a more objective point of view on my emotions. And when that's the case, it means that if I want to find a solution to it or if I want to deal with it, because I've got a better objective point of view, I can see what's the best antidote to the situation. Whereas when I don't do that, I get caught up and just feel whatever I feel in the moment and just try to do something that's gonna fix the situation but actually then even fix it might actually make it a little bit worse. And so when we write our emotions out on paper, we can separate ourselves from those emotions. I mean sometimes we may not even want to solve things. Like a lot of the times I don't want to solve something. Like I just want to stop feeling as much. Like I want to stop kind of like feeling sad as feeling saying I feel this frustration as much. And I want it to like kind of die down a little bit. And when I have it on paper, it means that I'm apart from it. And it means that I can just watch those emotions. It means that I can like recognize that you know what these emotions are just things that I might be feeling at that point in time, but I'm not gonna feel it forever. So give that a go, get a journal. Muji has like amazing stationery and like amazing like notebooks. I just feel like using their pens and using like their, their like their, their diaries and stuff and their journals, it's just been, it's like, it's a nice writing experience as well. Like there's a really big thing of like, you know, I know some people that type out their emotions on like an iPad or like, um, or like in their notes section on like their phone. Like I wouldn't, I don't, I wouldn't encourage that because I feel like there's a difference between um, like actually physically writing something on paper than just typing it up. Like I feel like when you write something, it carries more emotion, carries more weight to the words. And so, yeah, so if I were you, grab a nice pen, grab a nice piece of paper or like a journal or book or something and just write those emotions down, they might help. And one more way to kind of like release a bit of that anger, release a bit of those emotions, it's a chat to your friends. Chatting to a friend or chatting to like a partner it gives us a chance to kind of get a little bit of those emotions out. Chatting to a friend or chatting to a partner is just a chance for us to actually share what's going on in our lives. Take a bit of weight off our shoulders and like unload a bit of those emotions. And ideally you want to do it in private with like a friend or like a couple of friends, whatever you feel comfortable with. And you want to do it in an environment where you feel like you're comfortable to share what's going on. I know for me, I feel most comfortable in like two situations. One is where I'm just at home and I'm like either playing pool or we're just having a cup of tea, we're just sitting at the dining room table and just chatting late into the night. Or two, like we're up in the lookout. I don't like I haven't been to lookout in a while because petrol's really expensive at the moment and I'm like thinking twice about driving. And like, but anyway, like in the past we used to drive up to the Danox and we used to go to a lookout where like it's a really nice view, like we're looking over the city and everything, like really beautiful lights and stuff. We used to sit on the rocks there. Um, and just chat and like talk about what's happening in our lives and just 
vibe and chill and it's just really 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 nice kind of cathartic in a way um so yeah like if therapy or like you know seeing a psych or a counselor isn't kind of like your thing like it's completely understandable but if you've you know as long as you're trying to do something to kind of manage those things and it's working for you and you found something that's like that's that's super important so like these are just a few ways that we can do it try and just find something that works for you i can't emphasize enough and just practice learning how to be balanced because we don't do these things and like like we saw what happened at the Oscars, like we can get caught up in such a moment where it's such a significant point in our lives where like so much is riding on a single moment that it can make or break the situation. And like we can learn so much from this situation. I just feel like, you know, I'd hate for it to happen to you. I hate to for it to happen to me. And like if we can you know, learn how to best manage our emotions and like, you know, navigate life with like equipoise and like balance and like thoughtfulness and self-awareness. We learn how to navigate our life like this. Essentially, we just get better at, you know, choosing what's the most appropriate thing for that point in time. That's it. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like it and you subscribe to the channel. Like, guys, we've hit 1K, which is like so awesome. Thank you so much for like supporting us. It's been really nice. If you have any questions, by the way, I'll do a 1K Q and A. So if you have any questions, check in the description of the video or like, Message me on Instagram your question and like, and yeah, we can chat about another video. Wherever you are in the world, have an amazing day, have an amazing afternoon, amazing night, and I'll definitely see you in the next video. Catch you later. Bye.